There's a lot of men who say that they can't find a good woman, mm -hmm. that they can't find. And on the internet, they're sort of in the red pill space. There's like, we can't find the traditional woman. Mm -hmm. There's no more traditional women. So there's yeah. a particular thing they're looking for. But in general, what advice do you have for men who feel that they can't find a woman? Well, the first thing is we've got to enter into that ache instead of just trying to disprove, well, hey, maybe you're looking in the wrong place. You know, maybe your expectations are too high. Maybe it's like, that must be really hard because I'll bet you probably really just want to have a wife and beautiful little family. And, and I can, I can understand the ache that you feel must be very frustrating at times. And sometimes you feel like you might want to just throw the towel in. I mean, you've got those guys, MGTOW as they call them, men that go their own way. It's like, I've been burned enough and I'm just going to do my own thing. And so they're just kind of like thrown in the towel on the pursuit of love. And so I think the first thing we need to do is affirm how hard that that probably is for that guy and, and validate the suffering that that is. And then enter into, okay, well, well, what are you doing to find the girls? Like, where are you looking? Are you on Tinder? Like, where are you trying to find these people? And no, no, I, I've got, I'm on the Christian dating apps and I'm on this one and I'm on that one and I tried this one. And like, okay, that's in the tech space. What are you doing in your real life? I remember when I first moved to San Diego, right out of college. Like, I didn't know anybody. So I thought, well, like, how am I going to meet good people? So I went to what I heard was like the young adult parish in Pacific beach. And so I got there and I went to the first mass and they had announcements and they said, okay, this week's social activities, we got salsa dancing on Thursday. We've got a beach bonfire on Friday. And then I went to the leader. I'm like, Hey, do you guys have anything like religious, you know, like a Bible study or rosary? And they're like, no, why don't you do it? And I'm like, all right, okay. So next couple of weeks, I'm at the pulpit after mass. Hey, we got our first Bible study, you know, coming up this week. If You're you guys like, want to come. Co <laughs> yeah, it's a co-ed. Well, what I did, I was like, well, how am I going to get the guys to show up to a Bible study? I oh, said, wait, was this for to meet a woman? It, it was co-ed. No, it was, a, it was a co-ed oh. one. Wait, was this when you were trying to meet a woman or you were already married at this point? This was, no, I'm single, just okay. fresh out of college, just want to meet people in general. People. okay, got Just it. in general, <laughs> women would be nice too. And so I thought, how am I going to get people to show up? I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a four-week Bible study on relationships. Then all the girls are going to show up. And once the guys <laughs> hear the girls are there, then the guys are going to show up. Sure enough, it worked. Within a couple months, we had 70 people coming every week for a Bible study on this. And so it can be tempting to be like, there's nothing out there. Well, what are you doing to go create it? And so um, it's not that it's that simple, uh, but make sure you're not just looking on tech to find these women on the apps, learn how to talk to a woman face to face, you know, learn how to, you might be surprised how flattered a woman would be that you would actually ask her in broad daylight on a date, not let's hang out, whatever the heck that means, that you could stare her in the face, introduce yourself. Wow. I mean, even if you weren't that attracted to her to begin with, you just scored a lot of points by the fact that you at least have some guts to ask a girl out face to face. Cause that not only makes you more attractive because it shows you're willing to take some risks. It makes her feel more attractive because she's not dumb. She knows you're facing the risk of rejection, but the very fact that you would risk public rejection just for a shot to take her on one single date makes her feel more valuable. And that's why I read one woman. She said, yeah, the easier it is to ask a lady out, the easier it is for the lady to say no. I never thought about that. I mean, how easy is it to say no when you're just swiping on an app? It gets a little harder to say no when he's right up in your face asking with some manners and a little bit of confidence. I remember reading one girl and she said, yeah, if he asked me out over the text, even if I did want to go out with him, I'd probably say no, just because he asked me out over a text message. But if he asked me out face to face, I might just give it a shot because he was confident enough for the challenge. Okay. So I'll play devil's advocate for just a second. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the ultra achiever, ultra high achiever who's going to go start a Bible study <laughs> in order to, you know, find their spouse, which maybe that's not even that high of achie high achieving. Maybe that is what, you know, go to, the Bible study. Yeah, go to the Bible study. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I have heard the complaint that, you know, men, when they do ask women out, women are just not nice, yeah. that they are not very respectful, that they don't seem to value, you know, the chivalry that mm. men have to offer, good men have to offer. And it is hard to find a woman of virtue and someone who is feminine, yeah. not feminine in the like hyper stereotypical sense, but yeah. who is appreciative and receptive to a man taking the lead. Yeah, it is hard to find. I mean, we can't deny that because feminism has taken its toll. In, in, the, in the negative sense, there's a, there's a positive, obvious aspect of feminism, but then the what negative sense of, yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, just authentic femininity from yeah. promoting that. But I mean, yeah. second wave feminism, third wave, I mean, it just becomes such a mess of like, I don't need a man to complicate my life and my, I'm And almost being and offended I, that men would try to take the lead and, and yeah. you know, initiate a date or initiate opening the door or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. You know, and so I would say, what is God calling you to do in your life? Go do it. 
you know, because you read St. Paul, he talks about the, the married woman is anxious about her husband and how she can please him. But the single woman is anxious about the things of the Lord. I think we get these backwards. I think we're anxious about our future spouse before we get married. And then we get anxious about the world when we get married. It's the devil flip-flopping it. Now that I'm married, I want to go out and do all this stuff in the world. And like, whoa, 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 your holiness is your vocation, husband and a wife. But then likewise beforehand, am I anxious about the things of the Lord or am I anxious about my life doesn't begin until I find a wife? Because I remember Curtis Martin once saying, don't always run after, is she the one? Is that the one? Is this the one? He said, look, run after God. With everything you have, run after God. And after a while of running, look and see who's keeping up with you. That's the kind of person you want. And so when I met Kristalina, it wasn't on a dating app. I mean, granted, if I was really trying to find someone in public and I couldn't, I might look at some Christian dating apps, Catholic dating apps, things like that. But I, I knew that God was calling me to do chastity ministry. And where did I meet her? At a chastity conference. It was almost like she was doing what God was telling her to do and I was doing what God was telling me to do. And then we met each other. But Nonetheless, these years of singleness can really drag on in a very painful way for some people. And it's just like, God, if you're all powerful, then how come I'm not getting what I want? <laughs> you know, and it's God, it's not like I want something bad. I, if, if I wanted a kid my way, I could go meet a girl at the club and we could have a baby in nine months from tonight. But I want to be obedient to what you want, God. Like, where are you in this darkness? Where are you in the midst of this? And so I think sometimes God is taking us through a desert of purification, of suffering, that if you are going to become a husband or a father, you're going to have to give your kids the gift of faith. But how can you give that gift unless God has taken you through your own dark night? And this dark night might be dragging on longer than you had ever expected, but just meet him in that darkness of just knowing that he hasn't abandoned you, that he's actually joining himself to you in the sense of feeling, has the father even abandoned me? What did I do wrong, God, that I haven't found this beautiful one that I was always promised if I saved myself for marriage that she'd come along and we'd have this white picket fence and, and this dream never materialized. God, where are you in the midst of this? To me, Christ crucified is visiting you in a way that's going to sanctify you right now, even though the suffering can be quite a taste of Calvary. It's very beautiful.